أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نبدأ إن شاء الله التوتوريال هذا أو المحاضرة الحقيقة هذه to explain the last lecture which I could not videotape so what I'm going to do I'm going to start by from the definition of calculating the electric flux which is very straightforward uh, calculating the electric flux, uh, knowing that the definition of the electric flux is, uh, flux, uh, is simply the number of the field lines projected parallel uh, along the parallel component of the area. So the flux phi uh, is nothing more than e, uh, e, the electric field, multiplied by the area and multiplied by the cosine of the angle phi. We used uh, theta uh, because we used phi for the uh, electric flux. So it's really theta that we used. And uh, as I said, just, uh, uh, just uh, uh, counting the number of field lines uh, through a specific uh, area. Uh, okay. Now, uh, uh, sorry, uh, and we've done some examples. And what I wanted to concentrate on is, uh, 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 sorry, Gauss's law. So uh, we first started by looking at uh, or calculating the flux. Uh, through uh, in a, due to some charge a positive charge and through some uh, sphere surrounding that uh, charge and the way we calculated that by simply uh, putting in the electric field due to a charge at the point R which is simply K multiplied by Q divided by R squared the distance square and multiplied by the R uh, hat R hat is a vector is a unit vector indicating the direction of the uh, electric field in this case is radially outwards uh, along the radius outward and A is the surface area that we want to calculate the flux uh, through it and um, uh, of course the surface area is 4 pi r square if you do that and then you want uh, uh, the, first of all the 4 pi cancels with the 4 pi and the r square cancels with the r square and r hat uh, dotted with n hat uh, because r hat is uh, radial this way and uh, a hat is radial this way so the angle between them at any point is zero and cosine zero is one so if you put all that together you get the definition or sorry the uh, uh, phi as the electric flux is nothing more than q uh, which is the enclosed charge inside the sphere divided by epsilon naught which is a permittivity constant for uh, free space now, what happens if the charge is negative? If the charge is negative, so this is a positive charge, then the electric field is outwards, radially outwards. However, if the charge is negative, then the electric field is simply uh, radially inwards. Okay? And if I do the same thing, so what happens, the only difference, dA in this case is uh, out, uh, outwards, and the same is uh, the electric field, so the angle between them is zero. However, now the angle between them is 90, and cosine instead of zero uh, uh, would become cosine 180, which is minus one. So that means the only difference now is r dot uh, r hat dot n hat is equal to uh, minus one. And if you plug that in uh, for the uh, flux, then you get the flux is equal to minus q divided by epsilon naught. While for the uh, while for the uh, positive charge, it was q over epsilon naught. Okay, so uh, what this says, or who the, the person who realized this uh, is Gauss. And uh, Gauss, uh, the scientist, uh, realized that the flux through uh, an imaginary closed surface, uh, surface area is independent of the size and the, uh, the size of the surface area and depends only in, on the charge inside it. So if the charge is negative, phi is equal to minus q over epsilon naught. Or if the charge is positive, then phi is equal to uh, q over uh, epsilon naught. So, uh, so uh, the definition that he arrived at is that to calculate phi, the flux, the electric flux surrounding any charge. All you have to do is just build an imaginary surface that include, uh, include, uh, encloses the charge, and then you can calculate phi using that if you know what the enclosed charge is you can calculate the uh, electric flux so what happens if you have instead of a point charge q or negative q what happens if you have a lump uh, of a continuous charge distribution then 
so this is the lump of continuous star distribution and uh, what you want to do now instead of looking at the area you want to look at some small uh, infinitesimal uh, portion of the area dA and then calculate the flux due to the uh, due to that so you calculate the dA and the, the E and the, uh, the angle between them and from there you can uh, do d phi the result is d phi because you're calculating the electric flux due to an infinitesimal portion of the area uh, e uh, dotted with dA in hat is equal to q enclosed from this definition here uh, q enclosed in that so if you take over the enclosed surface if you integrate over the enclosed surface, uh, surface then you get this formula here uh, phi is equal to the integration of uh, e dotted with dA uh, of course in hat is indicating the direction of the uh, area and that will be equal to according to Gauss uh, according to Gauss is simply equal to the uh, char enclosed charge in that surface area uh, divided by epsilon not by definition okay so uh, one uh, comment is that Gauss's law is an alternative to Coulomb's law and um, and is completely equivalent to it. So there, you know, you can use one or use the other one. That's what the uh, to calculate the electric field or to get the force from the electric field later on. So uh, let's just before we start the application, let's look at this uh, equation or this expression or this formula uh, that was derived uh, by Gau uh, by uh, uh, yeah by Gauss. So uh, this formula is actually can be uh, looked at uh, from uh, as three equations or three expressions the first one is by looking at these two here uh, these two guys so the if you wanted to calculate the electric field uh, all you have to do is just find out integrate over the area uh, using a small infinitesimal uh, portion of the area and then if you know the enclosed uh, enclosed uh, uh, charge then you can get the electric field or you can calculate phi, the uh, electric flux, by simply looking at this portion of the uh, expression. Phi is simply the closed integration, uh, it's a surface integration, of E uh, dotted with dA. Or you can look at the first equation, which is phi, the electric flux is simply equal to Q enclosed over uh, epsilon naught. So in either, uh, each one of these, sorry, uh, each one of these uh, expressions, actually can be uh, used uh, to do something or to, to get something for you uh, regarding either the electric field or the electric flux. So the first equation, uh, this first one, find uh, the you can use it to find the flux, the electric flux, if you know uh, the area and the electric field. This one, uh, or this second expression, you can use it to calculate or to find the electric field if you know the enclosed uh, charge. Uh, of course, and uh, the angle between the surface area or the infinitesimal part or portion of the surface area and the electric field, or you can use it. Uh, you can uh, for this one, you can use it to find the flux if you know the enclosed chart. Of course, using the Gaussian surface, which I uh, will talk about next. Uh, the most the commonly used is this second one. This is the second one that is mostly uh, used, and it's actually used to calculate the electric field using uh, the Gaussian approach okay uh, okay so let's let's uh, just quick example which is, this is again uh, one of the questions that were in the uh, one of the midterms I think uh, one year or two years ago and again it uses one of these uh, equations uh, you have to use one of these equations so what the question is, says that the charged particle is suspended at the center of uh, two concentric spheres uh, spherical shells uh, that are very uh, that are very thin and uh, made non, uh, non uh, made of non-conducting material. Fine. Uh, so figure A shows the cross-section area. So this is it shows this cross-sectional area of the uh, arrangement. Figure B gives you the flux uh, or the net flux phi through the Gaussian sphere is uh, centered on the particle as a function of the radius r. Uh, of this year. So uh, this is the description of the electric flux through these spheres. So from zero to A, the flux is equal to one, two, two times 10 to the power of five. And from A to B, the flux is minus uh, four times 10 to the power of five. And uh, anything beyond uh, B, 
the flux is equal to uh, 6, I believe. Yeah. Uh, 6. Uh, yeah, 6. Yeah, 6 times 10 to the power of 5. And he wants you to find the charge of the central. He wants to find the charge here, the charge on the spherical shell A, and the charge on the spherical shell B. So how do we do that? We use the approach this. Uh, where am I? Yeah, we use this equation here, this equation, because I know phi, and I want Q uh, enclosed, and epsilon, of course, is, uh, is constant. Okay, so... Uh, First, uh, this is the equation that I'm going to use, and then uh, if I want the, to answer part A, Q, uh, sorry, phi central is equal to Q enclosed, so it's somewhere here, I have my uh, Gaussian surface uh, built somewhere here, and divided by epsilon. So this is 2, the uh, flux is equal to 2, at this, anything uh, in this area, the flux is constant, is equal to 2. 2 uh, times 10 to the power of 5, Q central divided by uh, epsilon naught from here, I can get Q uh, central of the C. Okay, so that's uh, part A. Uh, to answer part B, then what I want, uh, this is part B. Okay, so part B, I want the uh, flux, or actually uh, he wants to know the net charge on shell A. Uh, on shell A, that means what? That means I have to build my Gaussian surface somewhere here to enclose both uh, par, uh, shell A and the central uh, charge. So that means phi. That means the. Uh, that means I can do the following: uh, the flux on shell A. The, through shell A is equal to enclosed uh, the charge enclosed by shell A over epsilon. Now, the uh, in this region, in fact, I put minus five. It's really minus four. I forgot. It's minus four uh, times ten to the power. Of the, so this is. Let me correct that. So that's. Minus four, and then uh, you have the the sum of the two charges. This charge, the one in the center, and the sum. Alhamdulillah, excuse me. Uh, so from here you can get epsilon. So uh, again, these guys uh, is equal to uh, f this is four uh, or minus four, of course. And then uh, the charge on shell A is equal to this uh, minus the uh, sorry. This is minus and minus minus. Uh, is Q central, uh, so the addition of these two guys. Now that's the sum of these two charges uh, here. So that's part uh, B. Part C is to find the charge or the on shell B. So that means I have to use a Gaussian surface that is uh, that encompasses that, so it's somewhere out or greater than B. And then again, the uh, flux on shell uh, B, it will be the enclosed flux by shell B which that encloses this, plus this, plus this, this charge, plus uh, the charge on shell B, plus the charge on cell A, plus the charge on uh, the central charge. And I can uh, add all of these guys together, and then that will be equal to, uh, uh, you know, I mean, the, this flux here, uh, 6 times 10 to the power of 5, is equal to the sum of all these guys divided by epsilon. From there, you can get the uh, 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 charge on shell B, and that's uh, that's uh, you just have to do the calculations to find that. All right, uh, so that's uh, an application of the third uh, equation, this equation right here. Yeah. Next, we wanted to look at uh, the difference between uh, a positive charge and a negative charge, or actually not. Look, we, we've looked at this many times, but to just uh, to look at the difference between the positive charge and negative charge, and we see that. The only difference in the direction of the electric field, so the positive char uh, negative charge, the direction of the electric field, and dA are 180 degree, uh, 180 degrees, the angle between them. And when you have a positive charge, the angle between dA and um, which is uh, represented by n hat, and the electric field is zero. So cosine zero is one, and cosine 180 is uh, minus one. That's the only difference between. Uh, so uh, now we wanted to look at how do we uh, apply or how do we use the, this second equation. Okay, the second equation, in order to use the second equation, and remember what we want from the second equation, we want to calculate or use this to calculate the electric field due to some continuous charge distribution 
and knowing what the enclosed charge is. So we know what the charge is. And the only thing that we need to do in order to do that, uh, we need to select a Gaussian surface, that, uh, surface with symmetry that matches the charge distribution. So, uh, and actually, in fact, we have only three uh, types that we will look at, and, and then uh, I'll, I'll come back to these. But I just wanted to look at the Gaussian, uh, the idea of an imaginary Gaussian surface, which I talked about in class. So, uh, the three chart distributions that we know of is uh, a line chart distribution, a volume chart distribution in the form of a sphere, or a surface chart distribution in the form of a sheet. And we wanted to look at what are the proper Gaussian surfaces that we can use. For a line, we can use uh, a, uh, a cylinder. So a cylinder, if you look at the cylinder here, a Gaussian, uh, we use it as a Gaussian surface, an imaginary Gaussian surface. And it, see, it matches the symmetry. So how does it match the symmetry? Is that the area here, which is perpendic uh, perpendicular uh, to this uh, surface area, it will have a unit vector that's along E and here along a unit vector along E so the angle here is zero and the angle here is zero and the angle between E and uh, and DA and of course uh, if, so all the uh, electric field lines when I say matches the symmetry that means I count all the electric field lines through the surface that's what this means so if I have a line a line charge, a line charge distribution, uh, lambda is equal to Q where lambda is equal to Q over L then I use a cylinder in this form if I have a surface, uh, if I have a continuous charge distribution in the form of a sphere, then the uh, Gaussian surface is a sphere. So, and as you can see, the sphere encompasses or it matches all the symmetry or counts all the electric field lines. That's the, uh, the so the imaginary Gaussian surface, if you have a sphere, uh, a continuous charge distribution in the form of a sphere, is also a sphere. The third uh, type of a charge distribution is uh, a sheet, uh, something like the parallel plate capacitor, the proper or the uh, most convenient uh, uh, surface, Gaussian surface is also a sphere, and as, uh, sorry, a cylinder. And as you can see, again, the cylinder here counts for me all the electric field lines. And that's what we wanted to do, is just uh, the first step in using Gauss's law in calculating the electric field due to the a uniform charge distribution, continuous charge distribution, is selecting the imaginary Gaussian surface. Uh, uh, surface. And that's what we want. So uh, if it is a line, we select uh, a cylinder. If it is a sphere, we select a sphere. And if it is a sheet, we select uh, again a cylinder. And uh, we, we have to be careful with the orientation. So uh, I'm going to stop here uh, just so that the video is short. And then I'm going to continue the next video uh, with uh, looking at applications of this Gauss uh, of the formula that I talked about. And specifically, it's this formula that we want to uh, look at. It's this formula here that I want to look at where I want to use this formula or this expression, which is uh, determined or found by uh, or uh, discovered by Gauss uh, to, uh, to calculate the electric field using the enclosed charge and the idea uh, of uh, Gauss, uh, where we have to look at uh, the uh, sorry the infinitesimal area uh, component of the area and then integrate it over a closed interval. Okay, so I'll see you in a bit.